All right, in my last video, I got confused on some of the details of this proof because it's very technical. Um, and I had to go back and review a few things. Turns out there's a lot of things that I needed to add in. And so I've come back and I am going to prove the rest of this. By the way, I'm actually able to wear my um, Zossen House t-shirt this time. Um, so anyways, so let's, let's uh, wrap this up. And by wrap this up, I mean like actually get started because we haven't really done much here. We've proven this is normal in here and this is normal in here. So pictorially, that means this is normal in here. And so we have, we can draw like a normality triangle there. So we have this normal in here. Next thing we're going to want to do is we want to prove that this is normal in here and then that this is normal in here. And then that, um, what we're going to prove is we're going to prove that this quotient is isomorphic to this quotient, but we're going to do that by proving that this is isomorphic to this quotient, and then by a symmetric argument, you can see that this is isomorphic to this quotient. So anyways, if I keep talking about the procedure, I'm never going to get anywhere because there's, it's a pretty long procedure. So let's see here. So at this point, we're pretty close to proving um, this first state, the, this statement here, which is that this is normal in here. But before we do that, uh, we need a lemma. Um, next, I claim that if, let's see here, we have h2 normal in h1 tilde subgroup of g tilde and n tilde is normal in g tilde then h2 tilde n tilde is normal in h1 tilde n tilde. So basically um, normality of subgroups is con is preserved under multiplication by um, additional normal subgroups. And the reason I'm using tildes here is because I need to call these things something, um, but these are completely separate from this entire rest of this problem. So anyways, let's go ahead and prove this. Um, so let the map pi from g tilde to g tilde mod n tilde be projection. And obviously this is a surjective group homomorphism because we're just modding out by a normal subgroup. Okay. Then if we take pi restricted to h1 tilde, and this will be a map um, from h1 tilde to the projection of h1 tilde. So what we're doing is uh, pi restricted to h1 tilde, what we're doing is we're taking pi, and instead of mapping from g tilde to g, mod n, g tilde mod n tilde, we're just considering um, h1 tilde as a subgroup of here, but that's going to be our uh, domain. And then here the codomain is we're going to restrict that to just the image of h1 tilde under this map here. Um, and so then this is a surjective home omorphism. I'll just write home. And so it's surjective because we define the uh, the codomain to be surjective, or we define the codomain to be the range, and that makes it surjective. Um, and it's a homomorphism because pi is a homomorphism, and this is just we're taking a homomorphism and we're sort of restricting parts of it, but we're not breaking the structure at all. So, anyways, that's that. And so, um, then it turns out that pi of h2 tilde is normal in pi of h1 tilde. And that's because um, normal subgroups 
ma will map to normal subgroups under surjective homomorphisms. And that's something, let's see, I wrote out a proof of it um, here. If you want to read that for yourself, then go ahead. But I'm just going to talk through it real quick. Basically, the fact is, is that if you have a normal subgroup of, a, like if you have a normal subgroup here, and then you consider its image, well, you take, if you conjugate something in here, then because it's surjective, you, um, you can write that as um, a product of, you, you can write the conjugation element-wise as a product of three things, which are images of things in here. And then if you go, and if you go back to here, um, because it's a homomorphism, so you can bring those things together. And in the, in the, in the function, you're going to have um, just something from that normal subgroup here conjugated in here. And so what you're doing is you're pushing forward some, and, and that thing's going to be in that normal subgroup because it's normal. So conjugating it in here is going to be normal. And then that you're precisely, what you precisely have something of the form, your homomorphism applied to an element of the normal subgroup. So that's a really brief overview of it. Um, I think it's a simple enough fact that I'm not going to go into detail. You can prove it yourself if you would like to see more detail. You basically go through it uh, the way that I explained. You do sort of the, the first thing that would sort of come to your head and it, w it should work out. So anyways, so we have this is normal and this. Let's see here. So next, we know that H1 tilde times N tilde is a normal, is a subgroup of G tilde. And we know that because H1 tilde is a subgroup and N tilde is a normal subgroup. And you know that that's isomorphism theorem too, I think, is that if you take a subgroup times a normal subgroup, then that itself is going to be a subgroup. Um, I don't think you get that automatically just from taking the product of two subgroups. Um, but I would have to think about that a little bit. And I don't really have time to do that, nor do I really want to. So anyways, so define... Um, a homomorphism phi. And I'm going to write this in sort of a peculiar way. Um, but the way that I write this will kind of show you what the map is given by. So we have h1 tilde times n. This is a subgroup of g tilde. And so you can do an inclusion map here um, to go from here to here. And then once you're here, you can actually do the projection from here to here. And in fact, um, if you consider the image of h1 tilde n tilde under this inclusion, you're going to get h1 times n tilde. Um, yeah. So anyways, so this is, this is the map that um, phi is going to give you. And so what you're going to do is it's going to take, um, so h1 tilde times n tilde is going to get mapped to pi of h1 tilde. And so then what we have is if you look at phi inverse, of h2 tilde mod n tilde. And this, oh, by the way, this is, um, it's a composition of group homomorphism, so it's a group homomorphism. And that's important because this is equal to, um, right, this is equal to h2 tilde dot n, let's see here, um, is the inverse image of a normal subgroup 
and thus is normal. And now I am realizing something here. Um, and let me actually pull up my notes from this real quick because here's what I am looking at here. I'm not sure if this is quite inclusion because um, what we want to use is we want to use the fact that we have um, pi of h2 is normal and pi of h1 or pi of h2 tilde is a normal subgroup of pi of h1 tilde. And so I think what we really want here is we want um, we want to land in, oh, well, this is g tilde mod n tilde. Um, right, so what this is going to do is this is going to map h1 tilde n tilde into... Um, I'm not quite sure if these are the right maps here. Um, just going off the notes that I have, what's supposed to happen is if you look at h1 tilde times n tilde, what you're supposed to end up with is h1 tilde is, is uh, pi of h1 tilde. So let's just... Um, write that in there. Um, so H1 surjects on to G tilde, which maps into G mod N tilde, um, and then H1 tilde times N tilde is going to map to pi of H1 tilde. And of course you could have written um, just h1 tilde mod n tilde here, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and then from here, you know that um, h2 tilde mod n tilde, okay, well you can just, let's, let's write this as um, pi of h2 tilde, because that makes it really obvious what's going on here, is that we're, we're really just taking this normal subgroup of here and um, projecting it backwards to here. And so, um, yeah, this will give us what we want. And so this proves that H2 n tilde is normal in H1 n1. N h2 tilde n tilde is normal in h1 tilde n tilde. Okay? And so anyways, from here, what do we do? So let um, here, we're going to make some substitution, substitutions. g tilde equals h, n tilde equals h prime. Um, H1 tilde is going to be H intersect K and H2 tilde is going to be H intersect K prime. Yeah. Okay. Then what does, what, what do we have then? Then what does, what does this thing that we just proved say? It says that h2 tilde times n tilde, so h intersect k prime time. Well, first of all, is, is this all satisfied? We have um, h intersect k prime, or h intersect k prime. We need that to be normal in h intersect k. And yeah, that's like the first thing we did. Okay, so that's true, and obviously that's going to be a subgroup of H, because you're just, or, yeah, that's going to be a subgroup of H, because this is just the intersection of H with another subgroup, and that's always the subgroup of one of the things that you're intersecting. So yeah, okay, so that's good. Ugh, that N is bugging me. Let me write that. Okay. 
So that's satisfied. Um, how about n? n is h prime. h prime is normal in h by definition. Um, and so yeah, that's all we need. And so let's write this out. We have h2 times h2 tilde times n tilde. So I'm going to write that as h prime. So I'm going to write the um, I'm going to write the n tilde first. H intersect k prime, and that is going to be normal in, let's see here, h1 is, um, h1 tilde is this, and then n tilde is this. So this is normal in h prime, h intersect k. Okay, and look, there we go. That's exactly what we wanted. So that's the first thing. Um, likewise, you can prove that k prime, k intersect h prime is normal in k prime times k times k intersect h. Okay, so right. Okay, so yeah. Um, by the way, I say this as a symmetric argument. I think I, I think I did this. I might have done this previously. Um, but there's going to be a lot of that because basically what we've done is we proved that this is normal here. But the thing is, if you look at this, this wing and this wing are exactly the same, except you flip the roles of h and k. So here we have h prime, h intersect k prime. Here we have k prime, k intersect h prime. So what you can do is you can do this entire argument again, but with the other wing. So um, what you do is you let g tilde equal k, n tilde be k prime, h1 tilde be well, k intersect h, which is the same as h intersect k, and you let h2 tilde be um, k intersect h prime. And then you uh, plug that in and you get exactly this. Um, and so that's going to be this. And of course, like typically with the, with the other wing, I'll, I'll talk about it, but I won't like go through the details again. I think that'll be a little unnecessary and it'll take up a lot of board space. Okay, so there we go. We've proven this normality. That was the first thing. Then we proved this. Then we proved this. Now, the only thing that's left is to prove this isomorphism. And that I'm going to do, hopefully, all of it in the next video.